Hello and welcome back to Conversations with Loretta and Gillian. My name is Loretta and I'm a lawyer with the Queensland Retirement Village and Park Advice Service, which we call Curfpass. I'm joined today by Gillian, a project worker with Curfpass. Hi Gillian. Hey Loretta. I'd like to start today with acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which Caxton provides its services, the Yagra and the Turrbal people, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Curfpass is a free statewide service which provides advice and information to residents of retirement villages and owners of manufactured homes. Curfpass is within Caxton Legal Centre, a community legal centre in South Brisbane. Um, we've created this online series of legal information videos to provide information to residents and prospective residents as we are unable to hold events in public venues due to COVID-19. So today we're talking about participating in life in retirement villages and residential parks during this period of social distancing. We'll cover dispute resolution in both retirement villages and residential parks and also provide some practical guidance about participating in the annual and other meetings in your retirement village. There is no doubt that COVID-19 restrictions have led to a huge change in our lifestyle and the way we interact. Despite this, disputes within retirement villages and residential parks will continue to arise, which means that residents and homeowners much approach the challenge of advocating for their rights or managing communication barriers that come with COVID-19 restrictions. Absolutely, Loretta. Trying to work out disputes in retirement villages and residential parks may be much harder while maintaining social distancing and keeping yourself and others safe. This may be a particular barrier to starting a dispute resolution process as under both the Retirement Villages Act and the Manufactured Homes Residential Parks Act, the first step for people who live in both of these retirement living options is to send a notice to the park owner or operator of the village, which proposes a time and place to meet to discuss the problem. So firstly, we want to confirm that the Queensland Government has issued regulations in September 2020, which make it very clear that from 19th of March 2020, meetings which take place over audio or audiovisual links, which would cover telephone conversations and using applications like Skype or Zoom, meet the definition of meeting for the first step of the dispute resolution process under the Manufactured Homes and Residential Parks Act. That's right. These new regulations clear up any confusion about whether this type of meeting is sufficient for residential parks. In addition, the new regulations make it clear that other types of meetings under the Manufactured Homes Residential Parks Act can be via audio or visual, audio visual link, including mediation, meetings about park rules and meetings of homeowners committees. The law governing retirement villages does not contain a specific requirement that you must meet in person. And even though there has not been any clarification from the Queensland government about dispute resolution in retirement village, villages, sorry, our advice is that you can speak by telephone or use a video chatting program like Skype or Zoom if you want to start a dispute resolution process as a resident in a retirement village. Even some court and QCAP proceedings at the moment are using teleconferences or video conferences rather than requiring people to attend in person. So if you are unable to meet in person in your village but still organise a telephone conference or video chat, this should be enough to show that you have attempted to engage in the first step of the dispute resolution process. However, many disputes can be avoided completely if parties communicate from the very beginning. Yeah, in particular in retirement villages, communication between operators and the residents are often critical to avoiding disputes and many disputes related to how the village operator manages the financial side of the village. The Retirement Villages Act in Queensland sets out that each year, the village operator must call an annual meeting to provide residents with the annual financial statements for the village. They are required to give residents at least 21 days written notice of the meeting. You might also be aware that the village operator can also call other meetings about issues affecting the village. For example, the village operator may want to call a meeting to consult with residents about plans for redevelopment or closure of the village. Did you know that residents have the ability to vote on various issues at these meetings? This might be voting on approval of new services or capital items for the village. 
Similar to the dispute resolution meetings, the Retirement Villages Act does not specify that these meetings have to take place in person or on site at the village. While it would be most practical for these meetings to take place at a location in the village, such as a community hall, this may not be possible given COVID-19 restrictions or advisable in light of the risk to older people at the moment. Of course, if a meeting is not held in person, voting on issues is more difficult. However, the Retirement Villages Act allows for postal voting. To facilitate this, the village operator must provide a secure locked container for postal votes, which should be left in a village common area at least 24 hours before the meeting. In light of the COVID-19 restrictions and ongoing concern about the coronavirus, we suggest that the following approach could be used to convene residents' meetings. Firstly, the village manager should organise for the meeting to be held virtually, for example, by telephone conference or using video chatting technology, such as Skype or Zoom. We also recommend that the village manager includes, with the notice of the meeting, instructions about how to attend, a written summary of the issues, a copy of any statements that were to be handed out at the meeting, such as the annual financial statements, and information about how residents can cast postal votes on the relevant issues. Our view is the village manager should make themselves available to be contacted prior to the meeting to address any concerns about attending or the voting process. At least 24 hours prior to the meeting, the village manager should set up a postal voting container to allow residents to vote on these issues prior to the meeting. This is required under the Retirement Villages Act, regardless of the current social distancing requirements. Due to the need to maintain social distancing, we recommend that the postal voting option should be made available for a reasonable amount of time to minimise the amount of people who need to gather in one place to cast, to cast their vote in person. The postal voting station should also have adequate hygiene and social distancing measures. For example, hand sanitizer should be provided and a limit of one person at one time should be made. For those who have not yet used video chat applications like Zoom or Skype, there are a range of government funded services which may be able to assist you to improve your computer skills. You can access more information by clicking on the link in this video. Perfast provides free legal advice to residents of retirement villages and manufactured homeowners in Queensland, and we can assist you to navigate the dispute resolution process. If you'd like to make an appointment with Perfast, please contact us on 07 3214 Thanks for joining us today.